Hey guys, this is Mr. Kesbury, and I'm going to be uh, in somewhere in the building secretly having a meeting, not about you, but about something important. But the fact is I'm not here, obviously. So uh, I made a video lesson for you. So I'm going to run through the notes, so please get out your notes. And you, you can write down what I'm writing, and I'm going to try and explain things the best I can. If you need the teacher to pause the video so you have time to write, feel free to do so. But the goal here is for you not to lose any education just because I have to be in a meeting. So here we go. Today, we're going to be doing uh, 1.3, which is uh, angles. Uh, it's a big lesson. It's pretty important. Um, we're going to be talking about vocabulary for the most part in this lesson. But let's go ahead and get started. So here's an angle. It is uh, angle C, A, B. So the, the name of this angle, it's a... Angle CAB. And the way an angle's described is if you think about it, you've got these two rays connected by a common vertex. When you're thinking about angles, though, I really want to make sure that you're thinking about um, the idea of the space in between here. It's really this space. When we measure an angle, we measure how wide those two rays are, how far apart they are in that vertex. So if that was like a, the jaws of a shark or something, the angle measurement is gonna make a big difference. Let's label the angle. So we got our sides, and we've got our vertex, which is like the corner, that's the vertex. The vertex is a point, like in this case, vertex is A, and the sides are AC and AB. Notice the first letter is the end point for each of the rays. When we name angles, going down here, we can name angles a couple different ways. The key, though, is where the letters are in that order. So I'm going to use a little symbol for an angle, and I'm going to go angle CAB. That should be exactly how you would draw it. So I'd start the letter C, I'd draw it down to A, and then zig over to B. You could also have started with the B, then gone over to the A, and ended up at the C. Both of those are fine, but notice for both of those names, which are using three letters, the A is the middle letter. The vertex has to be the middle letter. You cannot just pick the letter order you want. The A, or the vertex, needs to be the middle. There is one other way. That way is only sometimes possible, it depends, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. You could potentially do angle A by itself. The key for that, though, is it needs to be really clear. If you're not sure what angle that is, based on the picture, if it's a really complex picture, you can't use a single letter. You would have to use three letters. So this might be a really good time to pause, to let people catch up. And while you're pausing, I'm going to scroll down and get started on the next part of the lesson. So this next part is, again, some more vocabulary. And the idea is you have this angle, angle C, A, B. And then the idea is how do we describe relationships around this angle? Like what does interior mean? So let's use this highlighter. And so the interior is what you would think it is. It's the space in the middle here. That is all interior space. The exterior is all of the space as you would think, on the outside of the angle. And the on the angle is hopefully obvious. It's actually physically on the two rays. So if it's on the, either of those two rays, it is on the angle. Okay? So that's the idea. So that's just the idea of inside, outside, or on. So if they ask, for example, this point E... Is that inside or outside, or is it on the interior or the exterior of this angle? You would say E is on the exterior, whereas the letter I, or that point I, is on the interior of the angle. So let's scroll down to angle congruency. So we've talked about congruent again. And remember, congruent has to do with size and shape being equal. They have to be the same type of shape we're not talking about apples and oranges here. They both have to be apples, or they both have to be segments, or in this case, angles. And they've got to be the same size, so the actual measurement. So we're going to measure using degrees 
A uh, common measurement type would be uh, we can measure with a protractor. That's the most common device we would use, okay? So we would say there's a 30 degree angle or a 50 degree angle or 172 degree angle. If you got some kind of picture, so let's just, we don't have a picture, so let's make our own. So let's say you've got an angle here. What angle are we talking about? The easiest way to tell somebody or tell a reader which angle you're talking about is to mark it up a little bit. You could put a little curve on there. You could put two curves on there. So for example, if you want congruent angles, you would put like a double mark on there like that. You can do that. I've seen other people, instead of doing curves like you see there, what they'll do is they'll do a single curve and then they'll use the hash marks like we did with segments. So they could do, for example, a double hash mark on the curve itself, and that would show that they're equal. I don't really have a preference personally. You're gonna have to sort of uh, make a choice on your own. I'm okay as long as you can somehow identify those two as congruent. The diagrams and pictures you're gonna be supplied might have either way, and you have to sort of understand what that is talking about. So go ahead and copy these notes, and when you're ready, let's move on to the next page. So naming angles. So I like to draw pictures first. So acute angles are cute. So they look like little tiny small little angles. So I'm going to draw a little curve there so you see what I'm talking about. Right angles look like this, like the corner of a page or a piece of paper or a rectangle or something. Obtuse angles are very large and straight angles look like opposite rays. And the, re the way this works is it's an acute angle if the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. It can't equal 0 and it cannot equal 90. Right angles, and if you look around the room, look at the ceiling right now. We love right angles. Human beings love right angles. So right, right angles, they get their own name. It has to be exactly 90 degrees for it to be a right angle. For obtuse, it's bigger than 90 but smaller than 180. So anything that's bigger than 90, but smaller than 180, it's not quite a straight line, like 172 degrees, that's obtuse. And straight is exactly 180 degrees. So a straight line is 180 degrees. So a semicircle is 100 degrees. So let's think, if anybody in the room does skiing or snowboarding and you do a 180 off of a jump, you're going to hopefully be facing the opposite side, maybe up the hill instead of down the hill, because you flipped halfway around a full circle. All right, so make sure you have all that stuff. We're going to scroll on down. We're going to talk about the angle addition postulate. Now, we just did a couple days ago the segment addition postulate, and I tried to make it sound super, super easy. You have two pieces of, of segments, and if you put them together, you get a total piece of cake. Well, this is just as easy I personally feel like the hardest part is naming angles, which is something we talked about earlier in the notes. I don't think adding up two angles is especially hard. For example, I'll erase this in a second, but if I was to draw an angle and another angle, and I say this is 20 degrees, and I say this is 30 degrees, how big is the total? Hopefully you say it's 50 degrees, because it's that easy, guys. So. To me, it's not the actual addition that's difficult, even the angle addition, not difficult. It's how do you describe it with letters? How do you name those angles? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this picture over here on the right, and I'm gonna label this. Now, here's something else that this is right now popping up. Look at the little M next to the angle symbol on both of these things. Do you see this little M? in front of the RSP, that M stands for measure. So when we're talking about measurements and we're adding numbers, so we are talking about measurements, we're gonna say the measure of angle RSP plus the measure of angle PST equals the total. So this is where people, their, their heads start getting a little fuzzy. You have to be able to name the total angle. If you add those two angles up, you get angle RSP. T. That is the segment, sorry, the angle addition postulate. Now let's apply that. So we've got a couple problems down here, practice one and practice two. 
they sort of give you a description of the picture, but they don't really give you a picture. So the first step that I personally would do is draw a picture of what we're talking about. So they tell you that T is on the interior of PQR. That's going to help us. So the picture for this, there's my PQR. Q, R. T is on the inside of that somewhere. So your middle piece is going to be like that. Same thing with the other one. So you got PQR. And T is somewhere in the middle of that. Now let's label what we know. So PQR, in, the, in this first problem one, they tell you PQR is 25 degrees. Personally, and this is just a personal preference, I like to draw a curve across the whole thing, and then I label the total as 25, like that. Whereas RQT is 11. That's that little space right in there. So they want you to find the other one. So we talked about this. You can write an angle addition postulate. You can set up an equation. But in this case, am I going to add these two numbers or am I going to subtract them? Hopefully you realize that the missing number, I just got to subtract 25 minus 11 to get my missing angle of 14 degrees. And that's it. The hard part, I think, for some people is when we translate this kind of a thing into algebra problems, like number two. So here's my suggestion. You could write the angle addition postulate. So P, Q, T, the measure of T. I guess they're going the other way. I'm looking at the, the example here. So let me just back step a little bit. R, Q, T equals the total, P, Q, R. So then you can substitute for these three things what you actually know. So we know that PQT is 4x plus 6. We know that RQT is 5x. And we know the total is 10x minus 7. That's the setup. And like I've said in the past, geometry is setting up. From this point forward, you're just doing algebra. So let's see if you can go ahead and do that. If you want to pause it and see if you can get the right answer, that's fine. I'm going to pause it myself and then I'm going to just reveal the answer magically. So pause and reveal. So there it is, x equals 13. So hopefully that's something you got. Now am I done? I said this yesterday, you want to make sure that you're done with the problem. So look back up at the problem. Did they only want us to find x? No, they wanted us to find PQR as well. So go back to PQR. They told us it was 10x minus 7. Plug in what you know. So 10 times 13, whoops, minus 7. So it's 130 minus 7, or 123. That is the angle measurement for PQR. All right, we're on to page 3. So here is a similar kind of problem, but they're using a strange word here. Look at this. It says QT bisects PQR. So if I draw PQR here, PQR, go ahead and draw that on your own paper, and I say QT bisects it, what does bisect mean? It means cut in half. So we're going to create two congruent angles. So this equals this. So we talked about this with segments. Here it is again as angles. It's like you're learning the same trick again. We need to set up a problem. They don't tell us the total. All they tell us is the measures for each of the smaller angles. So remember, bisect means it's cutting it exactly in half. So you are allowed to set these equal to each other. RQT equals the measure of PQT. So you can substitute that in. 10x minus 15 equals 6x plus 1. And then you solve it like an algebra problem. Subtract 6x, add 15, divide by 4. Okay? Then they ask you to find some extra angles, so I do that, and you're done. So here's what I want you to do. This one is going to be a little bit different. You're not going to copy what I'm writing here. What I want you to do is I want you to try and do this yourself. So number four, I want you to pause this video, and I want you to try and complete number four as a class. Do it on your own. You can work it through tables. 
and then after, uh, let's say, a minute or so, we'll unpause and we'll show you the answer. So go ahead. All right, so I started doing this problem, and you're like, wait, wait a second, hold on. I drew my picture, I looked at the information, angle PQT is 5Y plus 3, angle PQR, whoa, whoa, wait a second, that's not the same as number 3. So I'm going to tell you to pause again right now, and if you did not set this up correctly, you need to be careful, because PQR is the total angle. PQT is just the smaller, one of the smaller angles. So how are those related? If this is really bisecting the total angle, how are you going to create an equation that's equal to those things? So figure that out. Maybe double check your work. Make sure you have the right answer. And then if you think you guys are good, go ahead and hit play again and see what the right answer is. So the answer is 1 for y. So you need two PQTs to equal the total. Um, you can write that a couple different ways. We talked about it with segment addition postulate. The same thing goes here. Don't forget, though, we need the angle, measure of angle TQR. You might be wondering how to do that since they didn't give you any information for Q TQR. But what does TQR equal? Right, it equals PQT. So, so hopefully, if you can figure out the angle of PQT, you have your answer. So if I plug in the 1, the angle for angle... TQR equals 1 times 5 plus 3, or 8 degrees. It's not very big, is it? All right, let's move on. Look at this awesome picture. Check this out. So you got a whole bunch of angles in this picture. we got to be really careful when we label our information. So let's get started. So MNE is 75 degrees. So MNE, if you look at the picture, that's the total angle is 75 degrees. PNE, the measure of that is 35 degrees. That's this angle. NC is an angle bisector. What, what do you think that means? Angle bisector of MNP. So bisect means cut in half. Angle means angle. So MNP is cut in half. Okay. Um, so if that's cut in half, what are the two equal angles? Is there some way you can maybe do like double stripes or something to show which angles are equal to each other? Right, you're going to do something like this. So now you got, that's your picture. That's what you got. So the question is, can you figure out what those measurements are? So I want you to pause, and this is like a logic puzzle. You can figure this out. There's not really complex math involved. I'm even going to do it without doing algebra. I'm just going to verbally explain how to do this, but it should be pretty doable. So you as a group, if there's two or three people at your table, I think you could puzzle it out. If you still can't puzzle it out, you can phone a friend. One of you can get up and start hunting around the room and see if you can figure it out and then share it back with your table. All right, go ahead. Pause it and see if you can figure this one out. This one looks great. I love this problem. All right, so you think you have the answer. All right, we're going to try and find out what MNP is and MNC, which to me is sort of a giveaway, because here's how I would think of it. I would think of this problem as just like the last one, where this angle plus the other angle equals 75. So I can figure out what the distance is here, or the measurement of that, by simply subtracting 75 minus 35. So the angle, the measure of angle MNP, which is one of the answers we need, is 40. Now think about it. MNC is half the size of that because you bisected the other one. So MNC, that measure, should be 20 degrees. Hopefully you figured it out. I think it was very doable. So we're almost done here, guys. We've got to look at some protractor stuff. Let's do it. So reading a protractor, I think, is pretty simple. Um, there's a lot of numbers going on there. I'm sure you've played with uh, protractors before. So because you've uh, used protractors before, I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to give you uh, my personal opinion. Sometimes the lines are not really nice. So because of that, they, uh, they don't necessarily give you uh, an easy way to count. So what I do is I use the fact that you can count by tens. You can count the spaces. So looking at this, I know it seems childish, to find out the angle actually on this protractor right now, I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 
60, and it looks like five more. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65 degrees is that angle. Okay? All right, I had to pause a second because I'm looking at these last six problems, these last three problems, and I was like, what did they want us to do here? Here's what they want you to do. They want you to pick a pen color. So for example, I'll pick red. And they want you to draw a 15 degree angle. I don't care where you start the angle. So for example, I'm just gonna pick a random number here. I now need to go 15 degrees away from that number. So for this red angle, I need to go 15 degrees from there. That's my angle, 15 degrees. Okay, so go ahead. I don't want you to do both of these because I don't really, on this app I'm using, I don't have that many colors. So let's do one more. Let's do 105 degrees because that looks like the hardest one. So go ahead and try and draw somewhere on your protractor 105 degrees, which is what an obtuse angle is. Go ahead and do that. If you want to challenge, I challenge you to start where I start. So I'm going to start at 160 degrees, and I'm gonna draw an obtuse angle as that is one of my sides. So if you wanna try that, go for it. See if you can draw an angle somewhere this way that's 105 degrees total. So you could have done your own angle, like I said, but if you did mine, you would go from this 20 degree mark here, and you would have ended at 125, roughly, okay? So it should be 125 degree, but if you subtract the two, that's where the 105 comes in. So that's it, guys. So that's the angle lesson. I don't think it was that bad. Miss Breezy's in the room with the substitute, so she can answer questions. She's going to be teaching this exact same lesson later in the day, so she should be able to be a big help. If this is seventh period and for some reason she's showing this video, hi, guys. Miss you. I'll see you guys on Monday, I think. So uh, I'll see you all later. And uh, have a good weekend. Make sure you do the homework. The homework is a worksheet right after these notes. So get that done for Monday.